All right. There were not enough toilets at Versailles, yet the palace was always crowded with aristocracy and hangers-on and toadies and friends and suckers-uppers. So get this. Servants were instructed to place piles of hay behind the beautiful curtains, even in the Hall of Mirrors. And then, aristocrats so beautifully dressed with their panniers and their powder would go behind the curtains, even in the middle of a banquet where there was food, and do their business. They'd have a wee, or worse. Enough said about that. And then in the morning, servants were expected to clean up human feces. Nice. Aristocrats at Versailles ate the royal family's leftovers. They ate leftovers. Like this lovely piece of pie here. Yet often this food would be hanging around in unrefrigerated conditions and not only go off, but be infested with maggots. Oh my God! Yet the royal cooks were instructed to simply remove the maggots and pour sauce over everything to hide the taste and the smell of rotten, maggot-ridden food. Ooh! Ah, that's much prettier, isn't it? A pretty lady, a lovely aristocrat. Well, powdered wigs and hairpieces were styled using beeswax or lard. And as a consequence, they absolutely stank. So people doused their hair and bodies with perfume to cover up the smell. But worse, they were infected with lice and fleas. So that even the most fashionable of aristos would carry pretty little scratching sticks around with them to scratch the flea bites on their head. Like this one here, I love it. It has a little ivory hand at the end. Oh, it gets worse. It gets so much worse. These pretty powdered faces might look good in paintings, but in real life, as you know, the pasty ceruz and rouge would look completely grotesque. Something like this, actually. Yeah. But it often masked a bigger issue. Smallpox was rampant in the 18th century, and people used thick coats of ceruse to cover the permanent scarring of smallpox, which looks like this. And this was permanent. The nobility of Europe consumed vast amounts of sugar. Sugar, of course, that you know was um, farmed in the West Indies by enslaved West Africans. And in a time of poor to non-existent dentistry and dental hygiene, many of these pretty people had rotting teeth, missing teeth, diseased gums, and perpetually foul breath. So, should we get her to smile? Smile! Yeah. Many people wore false teeth. Here is a pair of surviving false teeth from the 18th century. Guess what they were made of? Real teeth. People would have their own teeth removed, poor people, and sell them to denture makers who would make dentures to then sell to the aristocracy who didn't seem to mind at all having other people's teeth in their mouth. More expensive uh, ivory teeth could be used. I'd go for ivory, quite honestly. No, I wouldn't. I hate the ivory trade. We all hate the ivory trade. But the idea of having another person's teeth in my mouth is quite grotesque. So people would sell their own teeth so that the rich could have dentures or they would pull them from the mouths of dead people. This is quite a famous uh, illustration by Spanish artist Goya. This is a man after being executed, a hanging man, and this is a poor woman pulling his teeth out to sell. But look, she can't even look at him. It's just so gross. It's even grossing her out. So, yeah, they would pull out the teeth from dead people and sell them to a denture maker. Could it get any worse? Yes, you know it's going to get worse. Syphilis. Syphilis which we got as part of the Colombian exchange. 
syphilis comes from the new world. But, you know, fair's fair. In fact, we got the, the better end of the deal because although the new world gave us syphilis, or the West syphilis, we gave uh, the indigenous people of the Americas every other disease imaginable, from flu to smallpox, um, and we also destroyed them with with uh, guns and um, stuff like that. So really, fair's fair. Syphilis. Syphilis is a terrible disease, which is sexually transmitted. And now we've seen, haven't we, all of that naughtiness and the sexiness and the love affairs. Well, a lot of people got syphilis. It was common in the upper classes, and depending on the severity, it could have terrible outward physical consequences. The least of which were the huge pus-filled boils that covered the body. So let's give her a few of those. There we go. Yet the syphilis bacteria also ate away at the face, starting with the eyes. So it was not that uncommon to see people in the 18th century sporting glass eyes, which, given the technology available, we're not all that convincing, so shall we give her a false eye? Yes, there we go. Syphilis slowly ate away at the face, and there was a market in the 18th century for false noses that syphilis sufferers could wear, because syphilis would actually eat your nose away. And this is a picture from a TV drama of somebody with syphilis applying his fake nose. Thick noses were often attached to glasses. Kind of like the joke glass and noses we have today. So let's give her a pair of those as well. And look at our 18th century beautiful aristocratic lady now. Not looking so hot. This is a, a contemporaneous image. Six stages of mending a face. You know, you put your wig on, syphilis also um, made you lose your hair. Put your false eye in. Not sure what's happening in image three there. Um, put your makeup on, put your false teeth in. So this was a reality for, for many people. But just to remind us of the, the image that the 18th century had of itself, and it's really quite different. Now listen, of course, there were many perfectly normal and attractive aristocrats in the 18th century too, like these people here. Just don't be too fooled by Hollywood gloss. And don't let the 18th century's ever-flattering self-image fool you either. Some of the realities were pretty disturbing. <laughs> 